Hey there, OG members and other friends of Monkey Pod. Uh, I'm here to admit that I've done something that I am not very proud of. And that is that I caught myself talking to one of my customers over on the OTM side uh, about KeepPay. Um, they're one of these people who's facing the change of needing to get off of WePay and onto something else. And they were asking me questions about KeepPay. What I realized as I was having that conversation is that I wasn't speaking very positively about KeepPay. I was speaking kind of neutrally about it and perhaps even a little bit negatively about it. And what I realized is that I actually just don't know. I don't have enough information to have decided or to have had the opinion that I had that maybe you know, uh, not considering it and going to something else was what I would recommend people would do. Now, the reason this conversation is really important right now is because payments are changing. And I can think of two main reasons why payments are changing. The first is that WePay, which is one of the various payment processors or payment gateways that e-commerce sellers could be using is going away. It's closing completely. And people who are on WePay have to find other payment processors fairly quickly. And um, that's one of the reasons that keep users, if they happen to be using WePay, are gonna to need to find a new place to go and keep pay might be the place that they choose if they don't choose something like authorize.net or Stripe or one of those other tools. So the second reason this conversation is timely is because people's expectations about their payment gateways or their payment e-commerce systems are changing. I used to think about them as these like really rudimentary tools that just you sent a signal over to them and they uh, gave a approve or a decline and then deposited money to us. But people's expectations are changing. Things like, where do you actually check out? What happens when a credit card uh, is expiring or failing on recurring payments? Um, are people looking forward to taking payments in ways that aren't credit cards like ACH and automating their ACH experience? So there's just lots of changes coming to the expectations that people have around payment processing um, and, uh, and what better way to uh, assess some of those and figure those out as to uh, talk about it directly now. So because I was not feeling good about the way I kind of passed this new neutral or negative judgment about whether or not people are going to go to keep pay, um, I've decided to invite uh, the most credible person I know about this topic, uh, which is Danny Deed. Danny is the uh, product manager. He's an employee inside of Keep who is primarily responsible for this new keep pay product or feature inside of the Keep system. Uh, and he's agreed to uh, do an interview with me today. Let's cut over to that interview recording now. I am here with Danny Didi, who is the product manager inside of Keep, who is primarily responsible for bringing this Keep Pay product to life. And um, as I mentioned in my introduction, I'm really excited to have Danny here because I think there's probably nobody better in the world to uh, tell us uh, what Keep Pay is about, who should be using it, what the future of that product looks like, and then also just talk about uh, you know, e-commerce um, or commerce tied to CRM systems in general. So, uh, Danny, thank you for making the time for us, and thank you for you know offering to shed some light on uh, on on why this product is exciting. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Cameron. I'm super excited about uh, being here. I'm excited for the launch of KeepPay. It's been something we've actually been working on for quite a while. Um, I think the initial kind of conversation started in mid to early 2021. So it's taken some time to get to where we've gotten. Um, but, you know, in the end of the day, you know, as a uh, as a business, we've we've been dealing with payments for a very, very long time. Um, and it's something that's obviously critical. It's a it's a backbone to, to any business. Right. If you, if you don't have money coming in, uh, you don't really have much of a business going on. So, you know, we really looked at a lot of the uh, solutions that were out there that we've been working with and you know, where there were hangups, where there were problems, where there was opportunities, and, and really also from our end of, of where we saw we could make it even better. Um, and that's kind of what just kind of started this whole journey. Um, and uh, here we are today where we have something that's live and out there and is growing opportunity. You know, I think uh, that part of what you just said about it being live, like as, as a a person who is deeply involved in the Keep community, and I consider myself a maven of, of, the, of the tiers and different CRMs, I didn't necessarily even know that it was out. So like today, like right now, um, 
I mean, we're recording on April 3rd. We might release this in a week or two. Like today, what can people access? Is it the full thing? Is it part of the thing? Like what, what could people take advantage of and keep pay today? Well, ironically, today is the date that we actually opened it up for most customers. Um, recently, we've just been kind of beta testing this with a few partners and uh, primarily our WePay folks, which we'll dig into a little bit later. Um, but today is when we really opened it up where everyone should be able to find it in their application. Now, that doesn't mean that it's the right fit for everyone today. Um, and just like with any product, you know, we're, we're going to have growth, we're going to have new opportunities, new things that we're going to add to it. Um, but you should be able to see it in your application to be able to, to log in and sign up. Now, Talking about who is a good fit for it today, um, that's going to be you know a, a, a wide variety of different types of, of customers, and that will open up more um, probably in the next couple of weeks and then in the next couple of months. So first and foremost, right now Keep Pay is only U.S. We do have planned to open up to Canada by the end of the year. Um, it's you know there's a lot of stipulations and changes when it goes in, you cross borders. Um, a, a lot more international payments have just different rules and regulations that, that create a little bit more red tape. Uh, but we do have a plan to have that open up by by the end of the year. And then um, right now we have an automatic migration set up for anyone using WePay. With with the closure of WePay, um, which is shutting them down, we want to make the process as easy as, as possible uh, for someone to transfer. And if we were working with any other processor, Stripe, PayPal, any of those, kind of be at their mercy when it comes to how they want to transfer those tokens and move credit cards around where we were able to really just tap into what we already had for information and make that migration process super fast and simple for we pay customers we plan to create that same process for pretty much every other process that someone can use uh, at least in the us to make anyone else that's interested in migrating over to keep pay just as easy and just as simple very cool i i so if people are using Keep, is it Pro, Max, Max Classic, oh. Ultimate, if it's across the board and people are taking reoccurring payments and they have like a tokenized or, you know, a hashed out credit card or something like that, you're saying that somebody who was subscribed and taking payments on WePay last month will get their reoccurring payment potentially this month or next month um, without yeah. having to ask those customers to, you know, put in a new security code or something like that. Yeah, that should be the case. Uh, just, you know, as a as a fair piece of information, for any time you're switching payment providers, banks are finicky, right? They, they're there to protect the uh, protect the user um, and their, their customers. So in the day, anytime you're switching from one payment processor to another, you can run into a scenario where you, you do have to ask your customer to enter in their bank details. That usually happens with much larger transactions. So things that you start getting above thousand dollars plus, sometimes those can happen. So you want to kind of watch those. And that's no matter if you're going to keep pay or any other processor, um, banks just get a little bit more weary. But uh, the way that we built it is really to just automatically transition um, what's called a payment token, um, which is basically just a credit card to switch from a WePay payment token to a keep pay payment token and automatically switch who the processor is in the background. So for WePay customers, that automatic migration truly means completely automatic, where once your account is active and live, all of your uh, credit cards that you had on file that were came through WePay are now uh, there and accessible for keep pay and any order forms, payment plans, subscriptions, anything you had running should automatically switch to keep pay. Um, and we've had plenty of customers um, that have already gone through this and seen a lot of success. Obviously, again, we'll have, you know, 98% of them go fine and, and they have a couple subscriptions they have to follow up with that happens. But uh, that's a pretty good, uh, really simple rate with them having to do anything other than just log in um, and really set it up. And when I say set it up, that's even easier than most other most other systems that you're going to set up because we're taking all the information you already have in your business profile pre-populating that onboarding form so really you're just checking to make sure this really matches up with tax uh, tax information as we are checking as a in the background um, with the irs to make sure that you know this is a legitimate business we are processing payments we have to be a little bit more um, secure in those manners adding a couple pieces of information like your bank account so we can pay out um, and you're good to go most people taking them less than five minutes um, to get through the onboarding process and then maybe only a couple more if we have a question or two for you. Right. That leads me to two questions, actually. The first is just a, a quick, you know, I, I'm sure eventually, yes, but maybe even today, Pro Max interface, Ultimate Max Classic interface combo. Are we ready to go across the whole thing? 
Great, great question. So just um, if our CPO, Ammon, talked a lot about, you know, what's going on with Ultimate and Classic. And, you know, at the end of the day, we have a lot we want to do with KeepPay. And we know that Ultimate is the direction that the company's going. So what we did is we tried to find a great middle ground. So what we've, we've done is the, the onboarding process actually set up and, and get connected to KeepPay. You do have to be an Ultimate to do that. And to access a couple of the new tools, like the dashboards, you have to be an Ultimate to see those. But once you're set up to just process a payment, to... Uh, access any kind of normal reporting is that you can easily switch back to classic and it will still work just fine. I can only imagine, not to take this at a negative path, but like I can only imagine, you know, that any given move that Keep or any software company makes is is going to be criticized or admired in, you know, the context of the receiver of that message. And my my initial take on what you just said is, you know, if, if I, as a customer of Keeps, had to choose between you multiplying that effort four times versus like putting four times the effort into one and then saying, hey, you know what, if you're still one of those people who enjoys the toggle between Ultimate and Classic, go ahead and use it. If your five-year-old dashboard is in Classic, go ahead and use the toggle. But um, I can only imagine that your team probably appreciated not having a mandate to make it work on the old thing and the new thing and the new new thing like you know all all at once so i i don't mean to put words in your mouth but i can imagine that like i appreciate hearing you know what we, we took a stance on that and and put it into one spot yeah you're not wrong i i think you know it was a uh like i said a, a mixed bag of excitement from both um you know our, our product team is actually doing the development work but also from our support team uh, they were really happy to hear that we did make sure that things like your order forms and your shopping cart things still could access and use key pay because that's a that's a lot of change to have to go through um as as people are still kind of in that process of deciding you know where do i want to sit we don't have it you know a dead date on when uh classic will will be going away and so there's a lot of uncertainty there and we don't want people to feel uncertain we want people to just be able to jump in and use it. So, um, you know, I think that was our perspective was like, we know the path that's going. So we won't, we don't want to waste time and things that don't make sense. We also don't want people to say, I don't want to use this because I'm going to be using classic for as long as I possibly can. And I want to be able to process payments in any way I have been. Absolutely. Um, the other little kind of micro question I have about what this is before we get into some of the more strategic bits of it. Um, you mentioned IRS a minute ago, uh, you know, everything that you go to, you go through an application process, they want to make sure you're a legitimate business, they want to make sure you're not a, you know, a scammer, that you're not, you know, pirating somebody else's trademark, like there's, there's obviously some, some things that I guess maybe Keep hasn't been responsible for as directly in a long time, right? You just give us the, 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 the quick lowdown. So they're going to want, in the current state, they're probably going to want like an EIN next year or later in the year when we get Canada, it's probably like Canadian BNs. Like what's, what's kind of yeah, the, easily that stuff, the yeah. It's pretty straightforward. There's actually um, a set specific uh, questions or, or pieces of information that are needed by the U.S. government um, that basically went into play um, after 9-11 in a, an effect to basically help lower the chance of, of funds being moved around for terrorism. You can dig more into it if you're interested in it. Um, it's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, legal legal jargon. But at the end of the day, it's really to your point, Cameron, is really to check that it's a legitimate business. That the funds that you're talking about, you're going to be uh, you're going to be pulling in and, and um, depositing the account are legitimate for that business, and that they are connected to an owner um, that is connected to that business. So the questions that we'll ask in the onboarding form, again, 98% of it is automatically going to be filled in from what you have in your business profile to the specifics that you will need to show up to the table with are uh, a social security number for the owner. That'll be uh, an important factor if you have multiple owners of the same business, like at 50-50, you'll probably have to have both, um, a tax ID for the business. And then, like I mentioned, the bank account, obviously we want to be able to get you your money. So those are really the only couple pieces of extra information. If you signed up for any other processor like Stripe or PayPal or any of those in probably the last five or six years, maybe even a little bit further back, you would have had to add a lot of answers to a lot of those questions. Um, I know I've had dealt with some customers who've been like, hey, I don't know why I have to answer these things. Things that have changed over, over the years, there's just more checks that go into place and it's really for security reasons. We don't really have an option. Um, it's things that the government's needing of us. 
Absolutely. Uh, a couple of minutes ago, you talked about how it is for a lot of people and there might be some people it's not for. Um, I want to revisit that concept for just a second and then maybe we'll maybe we'll actually even look at some of the features and things that are different about it. Um, the who it's for and who it's not for. Again, if I'm just making a whole bunch of assumptions without knowing things, I, I'm thinking of two different personas here and you can maybe tell me about them. Um, maybe one is not somebody who has to transition from WePay. Maybe they are like buying their subscription to keep today, right? And they're like, I'm a... I'm a structural engineer or an interior decorator or a, a coach or consultant or author, and I'm gonna put up my offer for the first time today. And like, I'm convinced that keep checkout forms or keep order forms or keep invoices are the, are the way to do that. Can we talk about that person? And then can yeah. we also talk about after that, maybe somebody who's like, a multi-platform type of person. Like maybe they're selling their, you know, their sweatshirts in Shopify and they're selling their coaching in Keep and they're selling their courses in Kajabi and those types of things. Like, would you treat that person differently or would you ask that person to also maybe try Keep Pay? Yeah, so uh, it really, I think, depends on kind of what your stance is on bringing in current like subscriptions or credit cards or things like that you have currently going. So to go back to the first person you mentioned, you know, I'm a, either a brand new business or I'm brand new to uh, to keep. If you do not have to um, bring in credit cards and br and and bring those into the system, you're starting fresh. Use KeePay. It's an easy way for you to get started. Everything's going to work the same way as with any other processor. You're going to have all the access to the dashboards and things like that that we're going to talk about a little bit more later. Um, totally feasible. You can sign up and just start going. Um, if you're someone who's using multiple different platforms, most likely you have multiple payment processors. So if, again, you're not using Keep for payments at all and something that you want to do, great place to try. Um, the, the customer that I would say is probably um, would be kind of in the middle, right? Maybe someone that could fit, may not fit, is you're doing payments with Keep today, you're using a system like Authorize or PayPal, and you are curious about keep it. you want to see this you want to see how those dashboards work you want to see how it's it's interacting you can easily add it right we have many customers that have multiple payment processors there's really no problem with that just we don't have an automatic way if you're like hey i'm using you know xyz processor and i want to push everything over to keep pay if that's not we pay today we don't have a, a automatic process to do that but we're building those so we will in a in, a, um, in the next couple of months um for almost all the different processors that are out there um, but yeah, I, I think that hopefully answers your question. It sure um, does. If you're curious yeah. about, I think that kind of covers most of them. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that 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 kind of makes sense too. Right? Like you, you don't necessarily need to break up something that you're on and is working. But, uh, but like you said, maybe you've got one new offer, one new subscription, one new product. You can think, hey, maybe I'm going to try that first. You can you could select that as your payment gateway for that type of product or that type of form. And, and um, so let's let's switch to features for a second. Somebody told me that what they were excited about was more um, true revenue information, like payment fails, payment successes, chargebacks, etc. In context of Keep, somebody said, hey, I hope it, what does it do now? What is it definitely gonna do in the next 30, 60, 90 days? And then I have a follow-up question about the long distance future after you tackle those first two. Yeah, for sure. So currently right now, the major features that Keep Pay does. Um, obviously, any of the current payment processing systems that they're currently using are all going to work as they have been. The things that are going to be ma massively different are going to be the payment and deposit dashboard, um, which is a new uh, form of reporting that's inside of Keep. And that gives you a lot of those answers you're just mentioning around declines, chargebacks, things like that. And that's just consistently getting better and better and better um, every month. We're, we're adding new features to that specific report. And then what we're going to be doing is in those from those dashboards, starting to take some more of that information and pulling it into different places of the app. Right now, that's probably the main place you're going to find it. Any of your current payment reports will still work as they have been. So if you have widgets, things that you built, um, set up, those will still work just as, as they have been. Uh, but this gives you a lot more detail. And, and if you want, uh, can we actually could jump in and I could show it. So um, we just go, so this is an ultimate version. If you click over here, we'll go to the payment dashboard. Um, I don't have as, uh, as many transactions as most people will, um, and they're all pretty small, but um, this will give you kind of a clear picture into every transaction that you've had and allow you to be able to kind of uh, lean into that transaction. So as you see with this one, it's just a dollar payment, 
but um, you can see the name of the customer. You can see um, more on the actual responses of things that, again, it depends on how much you know about payments, but AVS has to do with the zip code response, CVC response. So if you have a decline, sometimes you can figure out possibly why that happened. Maybe they typed in the wrong zip code. Maybe there was an issue with their CVC. So you can kind of decide, okay, do I just want to ask the person to retry? Or maybe it's a, there's a problem with the actual card, obviously minor successes. But you can get some information on the actual contact itself, the invoice that it came from. Uh, and then the nice thing about this, about another feature I would say from, from Keep Pay that's probably one of the biggest ones, is actually not a necessarily a tangible feature you can see in the app, but is support. So we handle all the support. So instead of having to call a third party or calling Keep and finding there's a problem and then you know us saying, hey, you're gonna have to reach out to your, your, your processor you're working with, you're calling support and we're handling and helping you 100%. And we have a lot of the tools in here that can actually help speed up that process. So you know, as you can see, there's actually an ID that you can copy if you're in chat, you can send it right over to them or, or let them know. We have a, if we get really um, detailed into it, there's actually some uh, full on like the file that's sent uh, for that payment intent. So we can actually dig into it even deeper in our backend logs. So we just have so many tools at our disposal, but you actually have access to a lot of those tools right here. Um, and what you can see here is the status of those uh, payments as well. So what succeeded means is that it's fully successfully moved into my bank account. Um, what you'd see if it was just currently, um, you know, if a transaction had just gone through, it's a processing, it's processing to get to my account, and then it failed, it would show failed. And then um, in a near future, um, to ask them some things that are becoming, right now you'll be able to see a chargeback, we'll help you with those, you can call support, we can work them through with you. But in a really, really near future, you'll be able to click in here and actually, uh, if there was a chargeback, you'd be able to handle it right within here. You can put in all your information, handle it right within Keep. So, you know, if you're looking for the actual, you know, a copy of the invoice or any kind of emails maybe you sent with back and forth in that customer that show evidence of why that chargeback should be a, a win, it's going to be really easy for you to find. Um, once the transaction has you know gone through and it's, it's showing it's successful, that means it's moved to into a deposit um, in your bank account, and that's where the second uh, report here or dashboard here, I'm sorry, um, is is really awesome. Um, and this is when we talked a little bit about getting access to you know really seeing you know the transparency on your um, on your rate and what you're getting charged as well as you know, what's actually going in your bank account, what's making up that, that deposit, uh, when it came in, all of those pieces of information. Again, mine are pretty small, there's usually one transaction per deposit, but um, for, most, uh, for most people, you're gonna have transactions you know, daily or every other day, so you're gonna have a deposit popping up um, a lot more often. Um, and so as you can see here, this will show each and every single uh, pay-in or each individual um, uh, payment that's come in that's made up this total deposit. How much were the fees that were taken out? Where was the bank account that it went to? Um, again, another ID. So if you do have a problem or a question about it, you can easily reach out to support. We can help you with that. You can click into that payment and actually, again, see pretty much all the same information um, that we just showed on the specific payment. And then if you do like to pull things like this out into a Excel file and upload it somewhere or something like that, we do have a CSV um, uh, dip, uh, uh, download. So you can just click on that and, and pull any of these out in a CSV. Um, again, some other updates that we're looking at doing here, um, being able to bulk uh, select so you can do multiple deposits, like a whole month's worth um, as a CSV, um, being able to, like I said, handle chargebacks a little bit better, um, and then uh, in the future, hopefully being able to um, have like a full kind of dashboard in here where you can enter in information if, let's say, you're having a big event and you're going to be processing a lot more than you normally do, being able to let us know that. Um, or being able to say, hey, you had a your normal transactions are a thousand dollars a piece, and you just had one that's twenty five thousand, and you don't want it to get caught up in any kind of a risk or anything like that. A lot of customers have those problems with other processors. Um, you will have a place for you to input that. Um, right now, any of those types of things, you can just reach out to support to us, and we'll we'll flag it, and we'll be good, and shouldn't cause any problems. Um, but that's a those are some things that are kind of on on the horizon. Um, you may have noticed when I was clicking on uh, the payment dashboard here that you can see some uh, of type. You may have mentioned, some folks might mention ACH. Um, we are working on bringing ACH into Keep Pay, So that'll be something that'll be pretty cool that we'll be working on. We should have that done. Uh, we're, our goal is hopefully by the end of, uh, end of Q3, uh, maybe sooner. And as well, uh, probably sooner than that will be Apple Pay. will be another way of, of processing payments. Um, those are some of the more uh, larger features um, that are kind of more on the on the near horizon uh, that we plan on bringing in. Uh, I think you know from just from those couple of pieces, it, the whole goal with with KeyPay, our, our main focus at the beginning was really to, uh, like I mentioned, is, is bring bring in the things that you're going to have to leave Keep um, to go see and do and handle and bring it right into Keep. That was our main and 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 
core focus and goal. Instead of putting a lot of bells and whistles on it at the beginning, we really just wanted to help make that process uh, as easy as possible. So you could do the things you've been doing that are working really, really well, and then uh, be able to take in uh, the things that you know kind of are annoying. We, we call it a swivel chair, have to swivel out of Keep and go to somewhere else, and be able to bring it right into Keep so you can see and access and, and uh, maintain. And this, this might be the reason why folks may dabble in it, try it out, and then as soon as they have the ability to, to migrate from whatever processor they may want. Um, Apple Pay, I'm filling in assumptions in my head. Does that mean that you know, if I was the customer and I went to a Keep checkout form or order form on my iPhone, and I fill in my contact information inside of that Safari browser and I click pay, I'll be able to like, you know, double click face ID and have it um, do the whatever magic you guys deal with, the tokens, the, the codes, the responses and so on, because that credit card is linked into my iPhone experience. So it's, it's basically, it's taking like my Safari browser and my iPhone going to a keep checkout form using those linked credit cards for, is that, is that the right assumption or is that overselling yeah. it? No, that's not overselling it. The way that you use Apple Pay with any other kind of purchasing today would be the way that you should envision this working. Um, just being able to double click and looking at it. That's how I spend too much money myself. Um, it's too easy. Uh, but yeah, so that's something that um, we have on the horizon. We have all the documentation, everything ready to go for that. Um, we're just going to have to fit it into our, uh, our current product. Uh, working that we're doing again right now we're just trying to make sure that all the we pay folks are getting moved over um that we have no no issues on that end um and then that's something that we have uh, on our horizon right and the second piece of this to unpack uh and it again it, whether this is criticism or baggage or or uh admiration i'm not sure yet but i my observation as a user um is that historically classic and therefore ultimate are really powerful in billing automations, right? Like your ability to 30 days before the credit card's about to expire, first failure, second failure, first failure on this product type, right? Like complicated, sure, powerful, also yes, right? Mm -hmm. um, on, on Pro Max, I actually, it's kind of a blind spot for me. Like I don't know what happens if you have a reoccurring invoice in Pro Max and then a credit card fails or is about to expire. I've just, I've not experimented enough. So either now or in in what this new KeePay makes possible, do you do you see more power? Like if, if I've got 150 or 500 or a thousand subscribers to my membership or my or my learning site or or my charity or, or whatever is 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 there something new now or does this enable us to do something that kind of cuts that difference between the complexity of the classic billing automation and the simplicity and maybe like underpower of the pro you know reoccurring system yeah great question I think when we look at the differences between Pro Max and and Classic, or even you know consider Ultimate today, there's areas of application that are a lot closer and uh, in in similarity, and there's areas of application that are miles apart or uh, kilometers apart, depending on where you're, you're listening to. Um, and payments, I would say, is is quite quite a distance right you from naming conventions of things like orders versus invoices e-commerce versus uh versus money um all these different pieces that you know definitely if you're switching or you're working with multiple different applications or you know if you're one of our partners with a lot of different customers can be kind of confusing and so our goal really as we've launched ultimate as a as a company and as a as product leaders is to say how do we fill those gaps um make sense for each edition um and be able to take some of those complexities that are super, super powerful, keep the power, but make it easier. And so with us, we're actually really lucky to also have keep pay. So now we have a lot more flexibility into what we can do. And, and to kind of give you an answer that also um, gives a little bit more information of why we even went the route with keep pay is kind of helps kind of lean into that. A lot of people for a lot of years said, hey, you guys just don't do as much updates in the e-commerce area. Um, you know, whether Pro or Max or, or Classic, you just, just don't do as much as you do probably other areas of the app. And one of the big reasons for that is when you work with all the processors that we have, what would be at one point we had 25 different processors, they all have stipulations, they all have changes, the industry makes a change, and that's 25 different times you have to make an adjustment. Those are all different APIs, all different connections, all different things you have to do. So we've been working to 
dwindle that group down to ones that we feel really, really comfortable with. And KeePay was a great example for us to be able to say, this can help us even probably close down a few more. Obviously, WePay was one that didn't, you know, wasn't our choice. Um, but getting down to a small elite group that we can work with, that customers are excited for, that work in their, um, you know, in their area, and allow our engineers to focus on the product and not just constantly doing updates. Uh, to put in realization, we've spent some, in the last couple of years, 60% of our time having to just do updates that are mandates from these different processors, that holds us back from being able to do a lot of really cool stuff. So um, by being able to work through that process of Ultimate and being able for us to create uh, these experiences that were in classic way, way, way more uh, attainable with that power, being able to you know pull that power down into things like Max and Pro, and at the same time, being able to tap into the power that KeyPay is going to be able to bring, like, you know, say, hey, you know, this, um, you know, this, you had these failed payments, and this is how much it, how much it, you know, missed out on. Be able to pull in that information of of how much the transactions were. Be able to just show that a lot better. Um, and then on the positive side, right, with you have a you you run an automation, you run a um, a broadcast. Be able to see the value of that, right? If you have an actual um, uh, offer to connect to that, um, those are the really cool things that we see we can do in the future. And um, I think that you know help kind of drive, see people where we're going and what we're planning to do, uh, but yeah, that's a those are huge blind spots for Pro and Max customers, and and we want to solve that. Yeah. So it, it sounds like that answers my. I, I, I before we hit record, I made a comment about you know that forward looking disclaimer of like you know we can't call Danny in two years or three years and say you told us this thing was coming in two or three <laughs> years or whatever, but um, it, it sounds like you've kind of answered that that. You know, maybe maybe that billing automation experience isn't different today, and maybe that visibility on on um, missed credit cards in Pro Max that kind of feels lacking isn't today. But like, without this transition, without this movement towards keep pay, we might not have the foundation we need to build like that stuff on. For our last little bit of time together, I actually kind of want to zoom away from uh, keep pay specifically because I think you've done a, a great job describing where we're at or, or where keep is at with keep pay. Um, but you've worked in your time at keep before getting the keep pay assignment, you've worked on lots of e-commerce related mm -hmm. parts of, of the product. And um, I, I think that it would be nice to just take a minute to talk about the state of e-commerce. So the first observation that I've got and I, I think I saw you a month or so ago on on the Keep Campus there, and and maybe yeah. mentioned this to you, is that in the current state of commerce, more and more things have checkout forms. Maybe not payment gateways, like they're using Stripe or PayPal or whatever, but I'm not sure that CRM is the first thing people are buying anymore. Right? They might buy a membership tool first, and then realize later that they need a CRM or marketing automation tool, right? They might buy, um, so the membership tool first, the learning management platform tool first, the, you know, create my t-shirt or book platform <laughs> first, right? And then in some cases, purchasing a CRM like Keep or another is kind of the second or third thing they do when they realize, oh, I need a source of truth. I need, you know, I need a hub to these spokes instead of having them siloed. Off. That's certainly not happening in every case, but I am seeing that a little bit more. And for that reason, let's pick on specific brands, but I'm thinking like, you know, Thinkific can take a payment to apply to, to unlock a course. Customer Hub can do their Stripe integration to unlock a course. And um, I know I've, I've, I've heard kind of a keep message a lot lately, uh, definitely from Clayton, and some of his recent work uh, where he talks about, you know, it's, it's not about how much of the platform you're using. It's about how much of your business is automated. And I think that's caused us to have to, you know, help our clients and just people in general shift from saying, you know, it, you can choose to turn off the stuff you don't use into platforms that aren't the best at it. So don't get confused about whether you can unlock course access in um, Thinkific, whether you can buy a course in Thinkific or using a Keep Checkout, just think about which one your customer will have a better experience with and then decide, are we sending the Keep Campaign Builder webhook to Thinkific to unlock the course or are we sending the Thinkific webhook to Keep to apply a tag that said they bought a thing, right? And, you know, so I guess the question, all I've given my own version of it, but the question is, there are a lot of things that either are or 
you know, are deeply or are tangentially e-commerce tools. So do you, do you have a take on that, that there are so many yeah. tools that could take payments? How do you choose which one is to shut off, which one is to turn on, which ones to make the, you know, the master, which ones to make the supporters? Like, how do you, how do you make those choices? It's an awesome question. And I, I understand why you kind of started to answer yourself over and over again, because it, is a, it can be a conundrum. Um, you know, like I mentioned much earlier, in the end of the day, payments and, and, and intaking payments and, and being able to collect on, a, on whatever it is you're trying to sell, that's, that's, the, that's the root. That's the, <laughs> that's the spine of the business, right? You, if you're not having money coming in, you don't, you don't have a business. So in the end of the day, it's not shocking to me that these platforms have you know, created these integrations. Um, not to mention that the bigger players out there, like your Stripes, things like that, they have made it really easy for other platforms to connect into them and, and to utilize them. Um, obviously, that makes you know, them a lot of money and allows them to kind of branch their arms out. So I can totally see as a, as a new business owner, you, you kind of starting up and deciding where you want to start. Well, hey, if I do courses, I need a course tool first. I'm going to start with that. But as you kind of move into your business journey, right, you know, keep, for example, we're not meant for some always meant for someone who's, you know, day one of their business, right? You may be a, you have to a little bit of processes that you want to automate and things like that as you get down the line. That's where you make those decisions to shift. Um, any business, as you're growing, you say, okay, what's going to be best for my customer? And what's going to be best for my customer is balls not being dropped, uh, me not having to be the source of answering everything. So automation, things like that. And so you made a good point there about like, you know, as you sort of have these things, what's going to bounce back and forth? It kind of an you answer your own question in the sense of saying, okay, if I have my payments going through, let's say we'll use Thinkific for example, if I have it going through there, okay, yeah, I can easily trigger the uh, the sale there to happen in Keep and trigger an automation. But now my if I'm using Keep as my contact record and I have, you know, either I'm support or I have someone else on my, my team that's support, they're not going to see the payment that actually happened in Keep. They're going to have to go to Thinkific to see that or into a Stripe, possibly a Stripe dashboard to see that. So even if you, you know, eliminating the perspective of Keep Pay and the benefits there of being able to see what you can see, um, unless you're using Stripe or using PayPal or something like that, if it's not within Keep, you're 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 kind of deciding, okay, now I'm going to have to work within these these several different tools. So really, I think at the end of the day, it's like how how is it going to work within your process of business? And you know, does it make sense? I don't blame anybody for when they're first starting. Hey, I want to keep my my costs low. I really want to focus on what I absolutely need. And if that tool offers a way for you to collect payments, by all means. But once you once you reach a point in your business where you're like, I need a system like Keep, um, at that point, to me, it would make sense to transition things like that over there so that you can have the full picture of your customer in that contact record. So you can take automated actions on things like a payment being made um, without having to get a little more um, creative in, in the manner. And like, I know we're focusing on full payment, full payment journey, but you know, just another small plug for keep pay. At the end of the day, if you're having issues with making that decision because of costs or pricing like that, we want to be able to work with you. And that was another big reason of us owning our own thing is it gives us some flexibility to work with customers so they're not stuck in a position where they're like, well, I'd love to do this, but I obviously don't want to be overcharged. So, you know, I really think it comes down to, to three major things. How do you want to have your customers interact with you in your business? How do you want to be able to interact with your customers um, in your business or, or your team? And how do you, what do you want to be able to see it in a quick, quick manner or take actions on from an automated journey? And how, you know, what do, what do my costs, what do my support, what is my, what is my time, energy, effort, money, all those things kind of uh, intertwined. How does that, how do I want to deal with that? And, and you know, as, a, uh, as someone who has to use a lot of tools in their, in their job, the more that I can consolidate, the easier it's going to be for me, as long as those tools meet my needs. I think it's simple as that. Absolutely. That's great. Thank you for that answer. And um, the, the two questions I want to uh, end on are, are uh, kind of just, you know, your take on, on the current state of things at Keep uh, and in e-commerce in general and those types of things. So um, the first question, is there something about commerce in Keep that you just know people love? Like day one on Keep, like they are, I, I, I know or have evidence that they are impressed by a thing it does? I'll say, I'm gonna say two, because there's okay. one that affects everybody, and then there's one that is a huge, huge, huge tool used by 
some of our um, longest term customers using e-commerce. The first one is really simple, and that's just the ease of automation from a payment, whether it's successful payment, failed payment, the the automation in itself and how easy it is to set something like that up. It doesn't matter what version of Keep You're On, you have access to that type of power. And man, that's that's that can be super powerful, right? If, if you're running a course, you don't have to go and set somebody up. That's that's a massive thing. It can unlock so much time for people and so much ease on where they actually put their time. So if you're a, a solopreneur, or just a couple, you know, a couple people on a team, it can give you so much time back. Um, and it's, pro it's pretty cool to see things happening after you've just made money uh, without having to touch anything. That's a that's a really powerful thing. So I would say that's probably number one. Uh, the second one is something that is currently just in in classic or ultimate, but we we are looking at seeing how do we interact it a little bit further down, which is uh, the the payment plans option and our subscriptions. Kind of they're kind of similar but different. Um, we have reoccurring payments in Pro Max. I'll be the first to say there's a lot of opportunity there. Um, the subscriptions, again, very similar to some things we talked about a little earlier, uh, like with Bling Automation, it can be a little more tricky to set up, but I know I've done plenty of interviews with some of our larger customers and some of our long-term customers, and between the ability to have flexible subscription models and the ability to have payment plans, those two things are, I've heard directly from our customers, like, this is the reason I will never leave Keep. They're so powerful. They allow me to open up so much more access to my, my clients to, to buy larger packages without having to put it all on, on a credit card on one day. Um, and just in massively increasing their sales by, you know, 30, 40% over, to, over a couple of months. So, um, you know, if you're, if you're on like Max and you're curious about switching to Ultimate and that's, you know, and options for payments, that's something that's interesting to you, that could be your defining factor. Um, and again, we are working to see what we can do to, to bring some of those features down. Yeah, your, your first answer there, like I was picturing the finger on the domino and how for those of us who automate all day, every day, it seems like such a rudimentary, you know, your circle, <laughs> you know, product purchased, your rectangle, send webhook to membership site or send email saying, we love that you're a new customer or decision diamond, first purchase, subsequent purchase, we love that you're a new customer or great to see you again. Like that automation feels so rudimentary, but like of what do we have? Nine stages in life cycle automation as we teach it. Uh, it kind of feels like as simple as that one is, it's, it's big impact. It is uh, seeing it as like the thing that pushes over the domino is, is I think fundamentally why people will stay with Keep because of what that automation, the advanced automation engine can do after the payment is done. So and the payment plans thing, I, I said we were going to talk about the kind of current state of e-commerce. And it seems like the current state of not just e-commerce, but all commerce is that stuff is getting more expensive. It, it, it's, it, and for the, the authors and experts out there who want to sell their mastermind or their course or their big, rich, their big on-site retreat, those things are becoming five, ten, twenty thousand dollars and for good or bad, what economy conversation, for good or bad, that's what's happening. And that means that a lot of those authors, influencers, product owners, they need to create that, well, could I get you in for four hundred and ninety nine dollars today? Would would that work? You know, that that part of the sales experience is important. And yeah, keep enables that, I, I will admit, very, very well. So my final question is is kind of the sister question to that question. Um, and it's not to focus on something negative or that you wish that it had. It's actually to maybe highlight something that other people are negative about. And you could say, if only they knew. And and so in, you know, uh, in pro or max, um, is there something that that people out there criticize or underuse that you as the insider know, hey, if they just read the help article or tried it out or understood it differently, that complaint would go away. They'd, they'd be blown away by that. That's a really, really good question. Um, I would say there's one, there's a few things that I feel like people don't utilize as much um, in Pro Max because they may not just know how to set it up. Um, and one of those biggest ones is the ability to automatically create an order. So this is one that I think is exists that most people have no idea it's even there. Um, we have had a tool for a long time in Classic. It's in the automation, uh, the automation builder, uh, advanced automation builder, and it allows you to basically be able to preemptively set up 
um, an invoice with a product on it. And if you have collected somebody's payment information already, you can automatically create that order. Now, this can be used in a lot of different ways, um, whether you're doing uh, a type of renewal as a big one that a lot of people do, where it's not say a subscription, but it's something like, hey, we renew once a year. Um, you can send out kind of a reminder email and then say, hey, next day, we're going we're gonna to automatically charge you for, for this thing. Um, but it actually will create a new invoice, send that out um, versus just like a receipt, like a subscription, uh, or I'm sorry, they call it reoccurring payments in Promax. Um, but it, it actually has that feeling you sat down and created that uh, that new order. That's a really, really powerful tool that a lot of people don't even know even exists. With that, uh, I appreciate your time, your enthusiasm, and just your, your depth of knowledge in this particular uh, part of, of Keep in, in the e-commerce. And do you have any 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 closing remarks? Any Anything that you I wish you got that. to say? Yeah. Let me leave everybody with this. You know, I think in the day, if you're looking, we'll kind of go back to the keep pay specific thing. If you're looking at keep pay comparing to like other processors that are out there, you know, keep in mind, no, no pun intended, we are we're brand new to this. This is something brand new that we're we're releasing and it has a lot of opportunity and we have a lot of great ideas and things that we want to do with keep pay to make it better and better and better. Um, there are going to be some things that we can't do today that things like, you know, PayPal or Stripe and that can do. And there's things that we can do that they can't because we're building this specifically for keep. We do not have any current plans. I would say probably the next three or four years, probably longer than that to, to take keep pay outside of keep. So the things that we will build, the things that we're going to focus on, things we're going to do are to make sure that the payment and the automation are combining together in the best way possible for keep. Um, and the reason I just want to call that out is, you know, people will see things that, you know, maybe, um, you know, hey, I see this is Stripe, does this a little better things that we're working on, we're growing, um, but we're hoping that we hear feedback from you all that are interested in using it. And like we mentioned way earlier, if you're curious, try it out. There's no negative implication for you just to try it out, see what works, see what doesn't. And, um, you know, as we add more things, it can possibly be your favorite processor to use. There you go. Danny Didi, product manager at Keep. Thanks for your time, your energy, your knowledge, and uh, we'll loop back in maybe a month or two after we get some uh, some some feedback and comments from the from from the friends at MonkeyPod. Would love to, and hopefully we have some more things to share.